Hi, my name is Teacher Antonio, and I'm the author of the book, The Monk from Brooklyn, and the host of the web TV show, Martial Arts Odyssey. But today we're not talking about martial arts, we're going to talk about TESOL. All right, now I studied in Bangkok at an experimental program called ALG, which is Automatic Language Growth. And Automatic Language Growth Theory uh, basically agrees with everything your mom told you when you were growing up, and your mom said to you, you can't learn when you're talking, you can only learn when you're... Doing. Listening. When you're doing. <laughs> when you're listening. All right. So ALG says listening is the key to, to all learning. Now, those of you that have had TESOL training, in modern TESOL theory, what do they tell you? Do they tell you that you want the teacher talking the whole time or you want the kids talking the whole time? You want time? the kids talking the whole time. Right. So this actually flies in the face of modern TESOL theory. Just think about this. Why did they hire a native speaker? They hire you because they want the kids to acquire your accent, which they will do by talking or by listening to you talk. Both. Okay, both. All right, so maybe if we're talking, I'm sorry, if we're listening first, and then we're going to practice what we heard. Is that right? Yeah, okay. So the, one of the problems with selling ALG in schools is that, is that here in Asia, parents don't want to, you know, if you said to parents, in, in Bangkok, we sit in a classroom for 800 hours, we're not allowed to talk. 800 hours of just listening, listening, listening. And the idea is that small children, like Matthew has his daughter now, and small children listen for about two years before they start, start saying stuff. And then when they do, their accent is spot on, and the pronunciation is spot on. And so ALG says, why don't, we, why don't we copy that for adults? Now, we can't really use ALG so much in the classroom here, because if we tell the parents, the first thing the parents are like, when am I, when, when's my kid going to start speaking English? And you're like, um, eight minutes after we start the class, <laughs> they're going to be saying their first utterances, right? So we can't use that here, but maybe we can take some concepts from ALG and then we'll apply them to, to TESOL here and we'll see how, how we can make that work. Um, are there any questions? Yes. Is there data to support the success of this? Yes, there's tons of data to support the success of this. Oh. This theory was actually founded by Dr. J. Marvin Brown back in the 60s, and it's based on previous work that was done with the silent way and with the natural way, and those might be theories you've heard of. And um, at AUA in Bangkok, because they've been doing it for whatever, 30, 40 years now, there's just, just tons and tons and tons of data. And they used it for uh, primarily for Thai, and now for Japanese, for Chinese, and uh, starting to use it for English as well. But the idea is just listening, listening, listening. And because you can only say things correctly if you've heard them a given number of times, isn't it? Yeah. Um, the only other question I have then is uh, what about uh, more of an interactive method when it comes to um, developing a functional use of grammar. I mean, of course, if you're listening, you're going to get the ability for an accent, maybe some isms and cliche and that sort of thing. But when it comes to being able to construct grammar, would you suggest getting more interactive and more participatory? Yeah, I, I'm not, I, I subscribe to ALG, but I'm not a strict ALG. So I believe that ALG can be incorporated into what we call a traditional classroom. So you would still, I would still be in favor of having a grammar book or reading book. Uh, you know, and, and all these other kinds of practice. Okay, strict ALG would be nothing. You're not allowed to bring anything into the classroom with you. Not even a, a pencil, a pen, they don't want you taking notes. You're just sitting and listening. But I, I tend to agree with you that at some point we got to start practicing. Okay. Now, ALG, when I say we listen for 800 hours, but it's a 2,000 hour program. So the first 800 hours you're listening, and then the second half of that you'd be writing and reading and doing all the things you expect to do in a language class. One last question. Sure. How, how old are you when you start that program? Oh, this is for adults. This is okay. for adults. This is for adults. Okay. Um, one of the reasons why, one of the things we can think about is this. When you're speaking English to your kids, when you're teaching and you're speaking English to the kids, do you expect that they understand every single word that comes out of your mouth? No. No. But yet, you can get them to perform, to, to do classroom management stuff, to do the exercise, do whatever, even though they don't understand everything. When you're talking to another native speaker, do you actually really listen to every single word that they're saying and understand it? No. no. But you're able to maintain a conversation and then occasionally you get these weird, no, that's not what I'm saying. Right? Especially if, if, if you know, you're dating or you're married or whatever. It's, you never listen to what I'm saying. And why, why does the other partner never listen to what they're saying? Because they believe that they know what they're going to say. Well, I, I already know what you're going to say. I don't need to listen. <laughs> 
Okay. So even in our native tongue, we're using a lot of other keys other than actual listening to language to understand. So what, for example, might we use to understand? Body language. Body language. What else? Tone of voice. Tone of voice. All right. And when you're teaching in your classroom, what do you use to help your kids understand you? Body language and tone of voice. Body language, tone of voice. What else? Come on, there's other stuff. What else do you do? Do you draw? Pictures, yeah. yeah. Do you use pictures? Do you use realia? Visual. TPR, some of you? Use TPR. A lot of TPR. A lot of TPR. Always TPR. Always TPR. <laughs> Except touching them. What's it? Touching them. Touching them. Yeah, it's actually, yeah, that's, that's part of one, one of the programs I used to work on Wall Street before I uh, came to Asia. And uh, one of the pro programs that we used for new recruits was that there's, uh, I would go up to a new recruit. And while I was while I was training, I would just reach over, touch right here, and I'd say, "You're very powerful." <laughs> Doesn't mean I'm feeling your muscles. Just I would keep doing. You're very powerful. You're very powerful. And then later, he would just get conditioned that when he felt that, he would know that means he was very powerful. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> she knew it without me touching her. And actually, if he's on the phone, he's trying to close the sale, and she's struggling. I might just walk over and touch him that same way. I don't say anything. Just touch him right there, and then. You know, it, 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 it's, it, it's like a muscle memory. It brings, brings back that feeling. Do you have a question? I was going to say like Pavlov's dog. Like Pavlov's dog, very much. Condition, condition response. Okay, I'm going to give you just a very brief uh, 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 feeling of what it feels like to be in an ALG class for German. Does anybody speak German? Nine. Okay. Nine. Okay. Well, we, we have some people who speak Afrikaans maybe, but uh, so it'd be a little bit similar. Okay. Guten Tag, mein Name ist Antonio Grasserfo und heute wollte ich euch eine Geschichte erzählen und es geht um Kung Fu Panda, Kung Fu Panda Geschichte. Es war einmal, es war einmal in China ein Panda. Der Vater war Nudelverkäufer. Er hat Panda Nudeln verkauft der Vater. Sie haben Panda Nudeln geliebt. Sie haben Panda Nudeln geliebt und der Vater ist reich geworden. Er hat nur von Kung Fu geträumt. Der Sohn hat nur von Kung Fu geträumt. Er hat kein Nudeln gemacht. Er wollte Kung Fu Meister werden. Der Kung Fu Meister. Lehrer. Und der, der junge Panda. Wie kann ich, ich ein Kung Fu Meister werden? Im Wasser war ein Geheimnis. Wir mussten im Wasser schauen. Was hat er gesehen? Sein eigenes Gesicht. Er hat im Wasser gesehen, hat sein eigenes Gesicht gesehen. Und er wusste, er war der Geheimnis. Let's see how much we understood. If we didn't understand everything, that's absolutely fine. Let's start over here. Okay, who says? Kung Fu Panda. Kung Fu Panda. Who's that? Father. What did his father do? He made Panda noodles. Panda noodles. And he was? Very nice. Very Why? Because all of everybody loved him. Very good. And the son? He what dreamed, did he want? He dreamed of becoming a Kung Fu master. So yeah. where did he go? The temple. Went to the temple. And who's this? Old master. Old master. And what did he ask him? Teach me how to do Kung Fu, old master. <laughs> over here, again, quiet people over here. What, what do you think he asked him? I don't know. Something about the water. He saw his reflection in the yeah. water. He got that. So. Very good. He saw his reflection in the water. And then he became strong. And then he became strong. Very good. He actually, what he asked the master was, what is the secret? And when he looked in the water, he saw his own reflection and he became strong. Okay, but how much of that did you understand about? I mean, almost the whole thing, isn't it? even without any language. So if we can understand almost everything without any language, how much can the kids understand? They're, they're studying English and you're using English, plus you're using all these other skills, so the kids can understand quite a lot, can't they? 